Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. Welcome in, welcome in. Winning Cures Everything. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. And this is the NFL Divisional Round Playoffs Reaction and Recap. Uh, lots of interesting things that we saw this weekend, some that we have never seen before. And, uh, it, I mean, we're, we're just going to take them in order. Uh, the show is brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They have got six incredible sports books. You can find more information on them over at tunicatravel.com. You can find more information about us over at winningcureseverything.com. All of our picks, previews, podcasts, videos, social media platforms, etc. We're on Facebook. We are on Twitter. We are on YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. Uh, make sure you leave a comment. And if you're listening on the podcast, go hit that subscribe button for us. Share the show out. Tell your buddies about it. And if you would, so kindly, leave a, a very nice five-star review. Uh, we would appreciate it. Let's go ahead and, and start it off. Let's go back to Saturday afternoon. Uh, we're recording this, I mean, minutes after the, the Packers and the Seahawks. But we're going to start from the very beginning. We're going to go through all four games, probably spend about, you know, 10 minutes on each game, roundabout, uh, not, not to take up too much time. But let's go on and talk about the, uh, the 49ers and the Vikings. 27-10 to 10 out in Santa Clara. Uh, game started off, you know, 7-7. Both quarterbacks looked kind of surgical. Looked like uh, Minnesota it saw something early with that press coverage when uh, when Stephon Diggs got that touchdown pass. It looked like this was going to be a ball game, and it's fourteen to ten at the half. And you're thinking, okay, we're going to start this off. This is going to be one hell of a weekend. This is going to be fantastic. Um, and then after that, it was, I mean, that lights out, lights out. If you look at the stats, three hundred and eight total yards for San Francisco. The Vikings only mustered 147 yards of total offense on 11 drives. 3.3 uh, yards per play for them. They had 126 yards passing, which was actually more than what the 49ers had. They had 21 rushing yards on 10 attempts. Now, first off, regardless of whether you get down or not, I don't care what your game plan is or whether or not Dalvin Cook is hurt or, or whatever, to only run the football 10 times. Seems kind of malpractice ish to me. Uh, watching this game, I could not figure out why they did not at least attempt the run more. Did you feel the same way? Yeah, I thought the same way. I never felt like they were so far down that they couldn't run the ball at all. Um, and uh, yeah, it was just one of those things where they were able to get nothing really going uh, once they kind of got down. It, San Francisco, you know, did kind of put the clamps on them in the first half after that first touchdown. But it, they, I mean, it was 14 to 10 at the half. Yeah. Well, I mean, you're not out of this thing. It, it was, it was strange to me. Uh, the 49ers had 47 rushing attempts for 186 yards. That is Kyle Shanahan football. Oh, yeah. And, and time of possession, of course, big here. Dominated. 38 minutes and 27 seconds to only 21 33. Uh, the 49ers looked incredible in this game, but I don't know how much of that was the 49ers and how much of it was just a really bad game plan by the Vikings. Like, I, I don't want to take anything away from San Francisco, but gracious, this just, it it didn't look like it was that much of a mismatch. Am I am I crazy for thinking that? No, I'm, well, I thought it was going to be a mismatch, and, and I'm not really surprised by it, but I... I don't know. I just felt like you're not really passing the ball on them either. It, it would yeah. be one thing if they were able to be cut. They were cutting them up passing the football. Okay. Then I would say, oh, yeah, no, that makes sense why they got away from the run. They couldn't run the ball. They can throw the ball. So let's just throw the ball. You're only down by 10 even after the halftime when San Francisco scores. You can still – your whole playbook is still there. Your whole game plan is still available. Continue right. to run the football or at least try to run the football to give the threat to run. And, I mean, nothing. No, no, we don't even know could they have run or not because they didn't try to. Yeah. I mean, it was it was really – this is a weird ball game. Like, especially after the way that the Vikings came out last week. That's right. And, and played so well. But, you know, this is another – just chalk it up again to uh, the Vikings playing outdoors, whether it's cold or warm or whatever. 
Uh, when they play in a dome on the road, it seems to be no problem. When they play, but that has nothing to do with their game plan, though, Gary. Uh, no, no, like, I, I just think that's happenstance. I no, I but if they have a terrible game plan, that's why they lost the game. I understand that completely, but this this plays into that narrative. It's a stupid narrative. It is what it is, but it continues to happen. Like it, it makes no sense as to why they wouldn't be able to. I don't know. I I don't understand it. Um, it. I mean, it just makes no sense. They. They had 79 yards on that touchdown drive. And then, you know, 147 for the game. Uh, I mean, they had less than that the rest of the ball game. Like, that's just, I don't know. Yeah, here, here were their drives in the first half aside from, uh, from the touchdown. Their first drive went three plays for two yards uh, and ended in a punt. Then they had the touchdown drive, which was seven plays, 79 yards. Then they had three plays, negative two yards, three plays, four yards, Six plays for eight yards after an interception and got the field goal uh, basically to end the half. And then they throw an interception uh, right out of the gate, and, and they're down 24 to 10 at that point. Um, yeah, I just, I, I don't know. It was strange. It all, Everything about this game was was very weird. Um, I will say this, you know, the, the 49ers defense, like whether it was the game plan or not, uh, they showed up. Like they they've had a few weeks off here, a couple of weeks off, and they looked rested. Whereas you know we'll get to the Ravens here in a minute. Um, th- this is what they looked like is why you would want a break, right? I mean, I guess they 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 didn't have the same break that the Ravens had. The Ravens took two weeks off. Forty Nine ers took one. Yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. That's the NFL team. Well, I mean, we can get to that now. We can get to that then. But NFL teams are built to where one week off is how they do business. In the middle of the season, anything more than one week off is is throws off the complete uh, rhythm of everything that they do. So, yeah, the 49ers had a normal week off, so that's a bye week. It's that's that's nothing different than a bye week in the middle of the season, and then they got back to business. You still have momentum. You still know what you're doing. And and you're still in football speed and football shape. You sit on the couch for two weeks. We're having a different conversation. Yeah, that's that's a very good point. Um, is there anything else that we need to hit with the uh, the 49ers and Vikings? No, Jimmy G played a lot better than I thought he would early. Um, he looked sloppy towards the middle of the game, and then he closed the game out just fine. Yeah. So um, I looked for a prop bet where I could bet him and uh, <clears throat> Kirk Cousins to both throw interceptions parlay them together because they are the same game. This doesn't make really any sense to me. You can't parlay two props in the same game. Uh, yeah, they they do that basically everywhere. Um, but I've never, I don't understand the logic behind it. Like, because, well, they because they don't allow you to parlay like correlated bets, right? Sure, you can. You can parlay spreads and and over unders. Well, yeah, yeah, they, you can do that because they Those they don't correlate it. Cons- they don't consider that correlated though, which. Doesn't make a ton of sense to me, but it's, both it's, quarterbacks to throw interceptions isn't correlated. They, they have nothing to do with one another. Agreed, but but when it comes to prop bets, they don't allow you to parlay any of them. I know. It's well, a, yeah, you do. You could parlay two prop bets. They just can't be in the same game. Really? You absolutely can parlay two prop bets. I, okay. Yeah. yeah okay, they just that makes can't sense. be in the same game. But that's the part that doesn't make any sense when it's two quarterbacks. Like, if I was going to say Richard Sherman's going to get an interception and Kirk Cousins is going to throw an interception, then, yes, I can't parlay both of those because it's because Richard Sherman's interception now counts for double because yeah. Kirk has to do it unless they do some weird flea flicker or something of that nature. But having both quarterbacks that are involved in the game that are never on the field at the same time is completely irrelevant to me thinking Kirk Cousins will throw an interception and Russell Wilson will throw an interception. No, you, but they're the same bet. You have a very valid point there. Um, I mean, out of one money and they would have lost money, so I guess it's smart on their part. But yeah. rarely is that smart <laughs> on their part. Usually, usually they'll I'd take anybody's money. Yeah. yeah, usually, yeah, usually I'd make that bet and I'd lose <laughs> it. But. You, uh, you got a very valid point. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and move into Saturday night. Probably, <laughs> or not even probably. This was the most surprising. Um, outcome of the entire weekend. Titans 28, Ravens 12. 
It's just an old school ass kicking. It was, and and when you go, if you just look at the box score, uh, that that doesn't, it, the box score doesn't match up with the way that the actual game went. Um, I mean, the Ravens put up numbers, and I mean they had drives, a ton of drives that ended in Titans territory, but when you have three turnovers and you go zero for three on fourth down, I. Uh, you're typically going to lose that ball game, especially against yeah. a team that made the playoffs, regardless of whether it's a six seed or not. Sure. Uh, this was, you know, Lamar Jackson uh, threw the football 59 times. And we, this is not like a jump on Lamar's, you know, uh, uh, not showing up type of thing, because he absolutely showed up. Um, he had 20 carries for 143 yards, but when Lamar Jackson is throwing the football 59 times, that that's not what you want to have happen with this offense. That's just not how they are set up. Um, you know, I, obviously, I think Mark Ingram. You know, him being hurt changed uh, changed things a little bit. But the way that the Titans ran out and took advantage of opportunities early, that had more to do with it than anything. Um, I, I don't know that Ingram's injury mattered at all. I, that no one. That, it didn't matter who touched the football. They couldn't run the ball. No, they couldn't run the football. Um, but on, on top of, you know, it, not, not on top of it, but it, they, they couldn't do anything with the football. The wide receivers kept dropping passes. Tight ends kept dropping passes. Um, but it wasn't just that. It was their entire game plan had to change when they got down 14 to nothing almost immediately. I don't know about that. I don't know that your game plan completely changed. So you're down two scores. That's not, that's not the end of the world. They weren't physically able to run the football. And if an injury mattered, it was it was, it was was Mark Andrews' injury because yeah. the backup tight end got hit in the hands four times, all for big first downs or touchdowns possibilities. And a couple of those were the tip passes that got intercepted. And uh, that guy just was a shell of himself playing way outside of his league. And uh, they really could have used a sure-handed, big-time tight end there. Yeah, no, you're you're right. That's about that. the that's the injury that mattered. But I don't know that 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 total. I mean, it, it would have changed the game if they would have made it closer. I don't know that it changes the outcome though. I just don't. I think Tennessee shut them down and everything. They well, they made they made them throw the football. They yeah. kept him in the pocket, and and only a few times was he able to get outside of the pocket. And uh, you kept him in the pocket and you let him try to make plays. And there's a couple of times he did. He made some big, big plays. Now, thankfully, Tennessee, um, those big plays happened at well-opportune times. The big monster throw to Hollywood to get them down to the one-yard line. Well, there's no time left on the clock. So they can't even run an offense. They get one shot at the end zone, don't get it, got to settle for three. Yeah, But if that happens at, you know, with five minutes left to go in the game or five minutes left to go in the quarter or the half or whatever it was, then, then there's a really good chance they get a touchdown there. Yeah, so that's a four point play, and 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 it just it kind of everything seemed to go Tennessee's way, but but Tennessee forced that hand, and once again, this comes down to their offense and Derrick Henry. The reason Tannehill was able, and Tannehill made some great throws. I'm not knocking Tannehill. The reason Tannehill was able to make those throws was because the absolute terrified uh, what Derrick Henry does to all uh, defenses right now. Yeah. They're just. They're just no one can physically tackle him when he's healthy, and that offensive line is pushing people around. Now you're leaning on secondary guys to make tackles. Yeah, and he, and he that's had, just not going to happen. He had 202 yards rushing um, in the ball game. He is the first player ever to go for over 180 rushing in three straight ball games. That's right. Uh, it is absurd what he is able to do right now. Uh, the Titans came out, had to punt on their first drive. Uh, Lamar throws an interception. They, uh, the, the Titans come down and score 35 yards, touchdown, 7 nothing. And then after that, uh, they have a, a fourth and one uh, from the 45-yard the line. And Lamar tries to run it, and he gets, gets no nothing. gain, you know, gets shut down. And immediately the Titans come out, throw a 45-yard touchdown pass, and – that was, I mean, it, you you could sense it right there, uh, because the Ravens had not been down at, at all at, nope. at, at, in what what did they say twelve games? Has it been twelve games? 
It probably was. I don't they, remember the they, stat, and I didn't see it. But, I mean, they dominated almost every game for, you know, the back half of the season. They were they were plus 97 in the first quarter for the entire season. Um, they came out and overwhelmed people early. And once the ball gets rolling, then they were able to dominate teams at just an unprecedented level. Because, and, and yeah. the Titans actually did what the Ravens do to people. You get out up on them early, and then you just control the line of scrimmage and you control the clock. Now the Titans did and, it a different way because the Ravens like would continue to score, right? They just it, that's right. Over I don't think the Titans continue. have the ability to do that. I mean, even against the Patriots, they they blew them out from the line of scrimmage standpoint. Henry got everything he wanted. They scored fourteen points. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, so so at the at the end of the day, it, you know, it's not like they have the ability like the page or like the Ravens had all year to just score at will whenever they want. They just happen to in this game. When uh when you felt like the game might be over, is the first drive of the second half when Baltimore drives it all the way down to the Tennessee eighteen yard line. They get fourth and one. Or, well, really, let's start with third and two. Yeah, and they run Edwards up the middle. Uh, and he only gets one yard. And then you run Lamar Jackson up the middle for nothing. And they get stopped on fourth down. And then immediately the Titans come out. And, you know, you, you have Derrick Henry, you know, on second and five for four yards. On third and one, Henry goes for 66. Yep. And it's it's almost ball game at that yeah. point. I mean, it just it, – when, when the Ravens could not convert fourth downs, which – they, everybody has been very happy with them all season long because they have turned into the analytical team. And, well, you know, we're going to go forward on fourth down here. It, rather, the, I mean, they're at the 18-yard line. That's almost a guaranteed three points. You turn that game into 14-9, to nine and you got a shot. But the numbers say, all right, well, we didn't get the first one. We should, we'll probably be able to get this one. Keep going. And I, I don't know if the analytics are wrong. You just went up against a team that was ready for it. My yeah. problem more than the analytics was some of the play calling. I feel like if they hard play action, some of those make it look like the fullback or the, the running back is going to just die for it and just hard play action, bootleg Lamar out. Lamar could probably walk to the first down or don't pass it to somebody open. But the problem is – if you don't have anybody you trust to catch the football because they're dropping all over the place, you have to have Lamar be able to bootleg out. I feel like Lamar can snap the ball and run to the long side of the field, always the, the lengthier side of it, and he's so fast. If he just runs at a little bit of an angle, he'll be able to get two yards before he gets out of bounds and nobody can catch him. Yeah, I agree. Like, I, I just believe his speed is that great um that 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 I would try to do that other than run him up the gut all the time it, but it really felt like every fourth they, down play all they did was run it up straight up they, they did the Tom Brady quarterback sneak but it didn't work like, they, like I think they felt like they had the better line of scrimmage they they felt well, like they, I mean, they were wrong on and, that they were they just were, flat ass wrong that yeah. is pride and that is ego and that's what cost them the game if they thought that that's yeah. the truth well I mean if you look at the play calling I mean is there any other explanation I mean why why not go with you know, running Lamar out to the outside, why not go with anything just bootleg pitch, to where you've got you know? a run pass option? Anything. Yeah. I don't know. It, it You're, didn't okay, then if that's the case, then that is ego and that is and they got they deserved all that ass whooping they got because that is nothing but pride and ego. I, I agree. I agree. I watched Bill Belichick lose a Super Bowl due to pride and ego. Yeah. That like that happens sometimes with coaches. And you just and he's the best that's ever done it. It's so it's that's, like it, that's all that is. If you thought you were smart, I just thought these. I don't. Maybe they didn't have a play that could. I don't. I don't know what I thought. But if they thought we we can push this offensive line, this defensive front seven around, they were sadly mistaken. Yes, they were. That front seven. If you're not going to hand the ball to Derrick Henry and say you're the hero of this game, that front seven gets all the accolades. Because they gave up nothing. Rashawn Evans and Jeffrey Simmons, uh, really, it felt like showed out in this game. Oh um, yeah, the, these it, were. Ga- but it, and, and here's the thing, though, it was a collective effort by the by the front seven. Oh yeah, that, this was the this was the earmark game for those two guys, though. Yes, this is yes. the game that's going to put Simmons on the map. 
people are now going to know his name going into Kansas City, and all the announcers are going to talk about him far more than they would have previously. And he will be somebody that we begin to watch and recognize, uh, you know, as so, the game's going on. So after they get the uh, the touchdown to go up twenty one to six, the next possession they come out, and you can tell that Baltimore is a little bit shell shocked, right? And Jackson is sacked for a loss of five yards. He fumbles the football. Uh, Simmons recovers it at the 20, and six plays, 20 yards, you know, and, and then you get the, the Derrick Henry um, – oh, no, this is the, uh, the Ryan Tannehill one-yard run. So the, the touchdown pass from Derrick Henry, which was awesome, by the way. <laughs> like, just incredible to see him. The, the angle – did you see the angle um, from the, behind the end zone to where, like, you can't see Derrick Henry at all? And then you just see him magically appear above the line of scrimmage and just toss the ball. It was a spiral. Like, it was incredible. Um, mm, it was kind of a floater. It was like a knuckleball. It was, it was 100% a floater. <laughs> it was, but it was, it was straight. It was a straight pass, and it was right. It, like, uh, what, what's funny is Marcus Mariota was on the field, and he was over on the, uh, the right sideline wide open. Like, there wasn't a single person covering him. So, had Henry not thrown it into triple coverage to Corey Davis, he did have an option over there to throw it to Marcus Mariota, um, which I, I thought was weird. Like, just really weird. They, they, Arthur Smith deserves a lot of credit for his play calling in this game. Uh, it, was, it was something else. But on this one, uh, Tannehill, you know, sneaks it in on third and goal. They go up 28-6. to six, And, you know, it, it's not like Baltimore was not able to move the football. Uh, like I was saying before, 530 yards of total offense. They had 92 offensive plays in this game to only 53 for Tennessee. Ben, but uh, don't break, man. That's what defense looks like today. Uh, you got that right. Like if the other every team can't every score, great right. team, every great team in college and in pros, you're you're not just making people punt all day long. It's giving up yards and and just shutting them down in the red zone. It's making the stop when you have to make the stop. Yeah, and and that's what's important. And there are some defenses you can look at and say, I trust this team to make the stop when they have to. I don't care what the numbers say. I don't care what the metrics say, and I don't care what the analytics say. This yeah. team can make the stop when they have to, and some can. When is the – maybe you know this. I didn't hear them say it last night. I hadn't heard anybody talk about it today. The last time a team won back-to-back -back road playoff games having less than 100 yards passing. Like, I, I don't know when – I mean, they only had 83 yards, the Titans did, in this game. And then I know they had less than 100 uh, against the Patriots. Yeah, I, I don't know that that's ever been done. I mean, I just I just don't. It's absurd. I mean, I'm sure I, – I, okay, I mean, it could have been done in, like, the 60s or the 50s or whatever. I don't – I got no idea about what look football looked like then. But in modern-day football, I can't imagine that. I just can't. No. I don't know. It's It's – Absolutely incredible. Because some of those great teams that had crap quarterbacks, um, you know, th that Baltimore team that won a championship and all that stuff, like they weren't they weren't the wild card team. They're not on the road no. doing it. No, you're right about that. You um, know. This was, I mean, a, another stat, you look at three out of three in the red zone for the Titans, one out of four for the Ravens. Um, it was just unbelievable to watch. It, it, was, it was a lot of fun to watch this ball game. You know, I sometimes these games, uh, they they may not do well as far as ratings and, and whatnot because of the style of play, but I think the Titans make this style of play fun. Like, I, call me crazy for that, but it, it's it is riveting television to watch. Uh, just mainly just because of what Derrick Henry does. I mean, he is he's a. Beast. It's, I mean, it's kind of impressive that they've won these two games against these two teams, and. The guy that I thought before the last three or four weeks of the season, okay, was their best player and most dominant player is A.J. Brown's getting – he's just not even involved. I will uh, venture to wager that A.J. will have much more of a presence against the Chiefs. Against the Chiefs? <laughs> much softer passing game. Yeah, I, I, would, I would think so. Their secondary probably going to give up some plays. Uh, to Ryan Tannehill. I, I would wager that Tannehill has a pretty good outing next week 
I, I don't see that Chiefs defense shutting them down. Now, you know what? Anything else that we need to hit on with the uh, with the Ravens and Titans? No. Let's go on and move into the Chiefs and the uh, uh, the Texans. Um, write down my time here. And so, Chiefs 51, Texans, did it end up 31? I turned it off in the last couple of minutes. Uh, I don't remember if, if I watched the whole thing, but I just don't, I know it was a 20 point game and I think they might've scored one last time. Let's see. And that was 51, 31. They did 31. Yep. They, they did not. Uh, Deshaun Watson, uh, I'll tell you what happened in this game. And so I am getting ready to sit down and watch the ball game. And so Saturday was my birthday. Uh, my wife had to go to Alabama for some family stuff. So it was just myself and my 14-year-old daughter. And she runs downstairs, and I'm, I'm set up. I got my drink ready. I am, like, I've got my whole work area right here set up. <clears throat> and she goes, Dad, I really need you to take me to Target right now. And I said, <laughs> right now, right said, now. Can't, like, can't stop. I said, right now? Like, because her mom was coming to pick her up at 5 and, you know, whatever. And I said, the game's about to come on. Like, what are you talking about? And she said, it won't take long. I just, I, my my compass and protractor broke, and I need it to finish my homework. And I said, you have got to be kidding me. Okay, fine. So, I I didn't even think about, like, I'm like, all right, we'll be back, you know, into the first quarter. This will probably be 10 to 3, you know, something, 10 to 7, something like that. Yeah. Right? And I walk in the door, and it is the end of the first quarter, but it is 21 to nothing Texans. And I am going, what has happened? Like, it, I, I had to go back and look and see, and it, they blocked a kick, and Deshaun was dealing, and the Chiefs couldn't get anything going on offense. And I thought, man, you know, it, luckily, so I didn't, I, so I wagered Chiefs on the show. But I had the over under on this of fifty two, okay. and I see twenty one to nothing, and then I see the Texans are about to line up for a field goal, and it's twenty four to nothing, and I'm like, "You have got to be kidding me! Like, what is happening here?" And then I see the implosion of all implosions from the time that I sat down and I watched <laughs> that field goal. After that field goal, the Chiefs outscored the Texans fifty one to seven, and. Bill O'Brien's team, like usual, folded like a cheap suit, man. A against a good team, this is typically what he does. And it was even more remarkable to watch than usual. Uh, tell me your thoughts on this. Like, what, what happened here? Well, so before we start breaking down the game, let's break down some betting stuff. Okay. I had, the, I had a money line parlay with the Chiefs. And the 49ers. So I needed the Chiefs. They got down 24 nothing. Sweating that. I got the Chiefs minus 10. Not pretty much thinking this is a loser already. <laughs> the one winner I had that I thought money in the freaking bank because they were down 24 nothing was Patrick Mahomes over two and a half touchdowns. And I was like, they're going to do nothing but throw, and I'm going to win this in my sleep. Thankfully, they're getting beat, and I'm winning one of these two. Um, and uh, and so I'm feeling okay. The big comeback starts happening. They are up by four. And let me tell you what Vegas thought of of uh, of this game and the outcome of this game. The line is minus ten, right? Some places got it down to nine, nine and a half. All right, right. let's let's leave it at ten. The worst number for the Chiefs. They're only up by four. The second half line opened up at minus seven, which means they think they're winning this game. They make they're making the line even bigger than it was previously before <laughs> the game started. Vegas thinks they spotted them twenty four points, and we still think not only are they going to cover the ten, they're going to cover it bigger than what they normally would cover it by. Yeah. And I didn't have the stones to put down on the eleven and doubled. If it was smaller, I probably would have. But I already had so much action and everything was going against me already. I was just like, okay, let's just leave it at this. So let's get to the breakdown of the game, by the way. Well, hey, uh, so before we even do that, uh, when Houston scored to go up 21 to nothing, the ESPN win probability for the Texans was 91.2%. Yeah. 
That is yeah. insane. What I, what, I did, what I didn't look at was, and I don't know that I could have even gotten this um, because I don't, I don't think the place that I bet does live betting. Like it's not like hockey where as soon as the team goes up by two scores, I can bet on the other team to win. I have to wait for the end of a period or the end of a quarter. Yeah. But I wonder at after the first quarter, what the money line was to bet the Chiefs to win the game outright. I, I wish I could have found that. I wish I'd have looked for it. I bet it was plus a thousand. I, I bet it was. I, I would have guaranteed bet that. It might have been a small bet because I had just so much money already riding on the damn game. But it, it, it would have been a taste just because you know, hell, if everything else comes through, then I'm then I'm good. Yeah. But I, I think at the quarter it wasn't twenty four nothing. I think it was only it was, it was twenty one nothing at the end of the first quarter. And That's then what I thought. Early, like a couple of minutes into the second quarter is when they kicked that field goal. So I should have been able to get a live line after the quarter, and I, I was for, part of me was just in panic mode, just thinking, uh, yeah. "Oh no, oh no, oh no! <laughs> I've got way too much riding on all this, and it's all going bad." Um, so, but let's get into the game. Um, the Chiefs played about as I see. I don't know that I credit, and maybe this is because all year I haven't really credited the Texans for anything good that they've done. Um, the the Chiefs just played a really piss poor game on the first quarter of the game. They weren't ready. Not, not a single player could make a play. Mahomes was hitting everybody in the damn hands. And I mean everybody in the hands. You want to talk about drops from the Ravens? Oh, there was there was not four or five drops in the first quarter of this game. There were six or seven. And we're gonna we're gonna change directions here. At the end of the thing. The Chiefs come back. They figure it out. They play their style of football. And if they don't shit the bed the entire first quarter of the game, this is a bigger blowout than than what it finished as. By the oh, way, oh yeah, uh, this is the, the, this is this is absolutely a, a bigger blowout than anything you could ever imagine. Um, t- two things I want to want to focus on. One of which is um, analytics is gotten into football. All right. Yes. Yes. And it's high time it does. There's one area of football that analytics is not involved in at all. And I mean at all. And it needs to get involved in. Okay? Because it happened last night. And then it's coming back this week too. These teams need to stop having somebody back there trying to field punts. We just need to – you're getting – quit trying to block the damn punt. I know we had a block punt today for the Houston, and it went really big for them, and they got a touchdown, and that was awesome. I get it. I absolutely get it. You – unless you know you can get there, and there's no way on earth you're going to get the penalty to give them another possession, you're getting the ball back. You're getting the freaking ball. And the difference between – I know some of these guys think I can take it to the house every time, but most of the times you get four yards, but you lose like nine or 10 seconds. Okay. And now today in football, there was a day and a time where I would have taken one inch over one second. That's just the way it was. The game's not played like that anymore. I would, I would much rather have 10 seconds than 10 yards because you can get 25, 30 yards of play the way the offenses are in today's football. Yeah. Okay. So when the ball is kicked and your feet are on that 10 yard line and you don't need to just why, why just run, just start blocking people. Don't call fair catch. Cause you can't fair catch and block somebody just start blocking people and don't let them get to the ball and hope it goes to the end zone. But if it doesn't, it's not the end of the world. Just quit trying to field the punt. It doesn't benefit you at all. And too many bad things can happen. Which, Once uh, in a blue moon, you can run one back. Which, which play what? are you talking about? The Tyreek Hill muff punt. I know, which do you remember? Was that third quarter, second quarter? No, oh, that was the very first quarter. That was that was, was the third quarter? score of the game. The third score. They were right up there. by fourteen. Houston's up by fourteen. They finally get to punt for the first time in the game. They got a block punt, score for a touchdown. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Chiefs I got it. go three and out. Chiefs punt, are, are, so so they get the ball. The Chiefs finally get a stop, finally get a stop, and they punt the ball back, and Tyreek Hill on his own five-yard line. That's right, yep. Most of po- why are you feeling the damn punt? I know you think you can take it to the house anytime you want. Guess what? It doesn't matter. you got Patrick freaking Mahomes. You know what would help? If you catch the damn football, you wouldn't be in this spot. Now you think you can catch a punt? All right, so, so Let the let's, thing drop. Let's play off of this. Um, Houston is up 24 to nothing and they've got a blocked punt 
and a muffed punt. And a muff punt. And that they is, gave him the ball on like the four four yard line, three yard line. Yeah, which which you know they got a touchdown. That's twenty one nothing. Uh, let's see, six yard line. They they ran two plays. Yeah. Um, so they got a touchdown there. They get a punt. They come down. They score a field goal. They're up twenty four to nothing. And then they get a uh, let's see, the Chiefs get a kick return to let's see the let's see the Houston forty two, yep. and then they score in two plays. Now. On the next drive, when it is twenty-four to seven, the Texans go three and out, mm-hmm. and on fourth and four, rather than just punting the football and playing defense and hoping that something good happens again when you punt the ball, um, they direct snap it to Reed, and they run him on let's see the right end for two yards. I was about to say and he so got half of it. He got half of it. From your own 31-yard line, fourth and four, why on earth would you go for that right there when you're up 24-7? to seven? And if you don't get it, you are giving the most prolific offense in football the ball back uh, only 33 yards away. Like, explain this to me. Now, that I don't have an answer for, okay? Why why people go into desperation mode when they do th- doesn't it, make any sense to me It seemed like a all. panic move, didn't it? No, that that was a panic move. Yes, that was a panic move, and and I don't and I don't get that. All right, that that I don't understand either. But there's no rhyme or reason, and that just doesn't happen very often for me to have a say in it. The reason I'm panicking, not panicking, but making a big deal about the people, you know, returning the punts. Yeah, trying last to night. Last night it wasn't the muff punt. It was guys fielded the punt, then they ran around for seven seconds before they got tackled, and. You need those seconds. You don't need that three yards you got, dickhead. Yeah. The, just the, just fair catch the thing or get out of the way and let the thing roll. Yeah. The because Ravens, too many bad things can happen when you try to catch it. The Ravens could have used the time uh, on that last drive. Yes. And uh, like I don't I don't know that it was clock mismanagement so much as it was like okay, you wasted seven, eight, nine seconds. That's right. Trying to that's return right. a punt. That's that's at least two plays in the NFL. And in two plays, you can score. Yeah. I mean, they, they get score. down there. They run one play. Uh, and we're back to the Ravens game again. But they, they ran one play, and Lamar had to throw it out of bounds. And then they've got yeah. three seconds left with no timeouts. And, All game. You know, you, you got to have you got to kick the field goal there. Yeah. So, either no. way, back to the uh, the Chiefs and the, uh, and the Texans here. Um the Chiefs come down after that uh, after that fake punt, and three plays, thirty three yards, score to make it twenty four to fourteen. Immediately, they come out and fumble the ball, like just right on, on the kickoff. Um, you know, t- the Chiefs get it back and score again. Score again, like it's three Hang plays, on. six. The yards. last two, the the second and third touchdown, exact same play call. Oh yeah. Exact same play call. It was beautiful. Yeah, so, I'm texting with a, I'm texting with a buddy of mine, and he was like, "Wait, did, did they just run that same play call?" And then a couple of plays later, they got down in the same position when they were going to score the fourth time. Yeah, and it was like they were like first and three, and he was like, "I bet another play call." And they didn't <laughs> run that play call, and I think they that was the one where he got like the weird shuffle pass. Yeah, and he yeah. might have crossed the line of scrimmage, but he didn't, and and whatever. But like that was third down. They don't get that, and I'm thinking, what? You you know what play to run? They can't they can't guard it. It's yeah. not a they don't know it's coming. It's a they don't have the guys to guard that scheme. They just don't. Yeah, because if they cover the underneath man, which was Kelsey every time, then somebody else is going to be wi- not just a little open, wide open. It is remarkable that the Texans blew a twenty-four to nothing lead, not over the course of the ball game, no, but over in, the course the, of one quarter. In one quarter, they gave up four touchdowns, and and then at the end of the half, missed a field goal. Like interesting that they that they said on there that in the playoffs, nobody had ever attempted a fifty-plus yard field goal in Arrowhead. I, no, that was I mean, strange. that's a, when you say in Arrowhead, it changes things. Yeah. A, how many games in Arrowhead have we had that are playoff games? The weather's always bad in Arrowhead, usually in playoff games. Yeah. We've got snow and wind, and so that doesn't surprise me. 
Um, let me, let me tell you what I found really what I, well, I guess wishful thinking, getting back to the greediness of and my, and my gambling issues is <laughs> I, I really wanted Houston to make that field goal because I think that would have made the second half line a lot shorter. If it was only a one point game, yeah. that would have made the second half line a lot shorter. I think, I think I might've been wrong. I think. And then I would have had the stones to put it on then. Yeah, I mean, if it's like Kansas City minus four, yeah. minus five, something like that, yeah. then you feel like you've got value there. If it's a, a four when touchdown. It was a, when it was a touchdown, I thought, mm, I'm, I'm staying away. Yeah. Because I've got you, enough on it already. If it was a field goal, I would have I'd have taken it. You, you feel like at some point in the second half that, okay, Houston will, will get this thing back ticking again, right? And instead, I mean, the Chiefs scored – on, what was it, seven straight possessions. They scored touchdowns on six straight, then they kicked a field goal. And, I mean, once it's 51-31, I mean, it's, I mean that's that's it. Like, it's ball game. Oh, yeah, it's ball game. It's you ball know, game. That really, when, when it got to 48-31, to like, the Texans could not stop the Chiefs at all. And and don't get me wrong, I kind of had a feeling that they wouldn't be able to. because I mean, Well, yeah, I thought they able. wouldn't be able to the whole game. They stopped them for a quarter. Here's what's crazy, though. The Chiefs' defense. Unbelievable. After, after they gave up those 24 points, uh, they yeah. they shut them like a toilet seat. They just dropped them. Here's here's what they did. Uh, let's see. Once uh, once they gave up 24 points, so it was 24 to nothing. C. Uh, Spagnoli is their defensive coordinator, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he, had, he, he pitched a hell of a game third uh, second quarter on. Yes. Uh, four plays and out um, for the Texans. Then you've got the uh, the kickoff return fumble, uh, six plays and out. Then you've got the missed field goal. Then you've got uh, a three and out and a punt. Then you've got a nine-play, 75-yard touchdown drive. You've got a six-play, 33-yard, uh, and then down on downs, or turnover yep. on downs. Then you've got another nine-play, 33-yard over on downs, 13 plays, 68 yards over on downs. Yep. Like yep. They, when they got to a point where they had to score touchdowns and good gig field goals anymore, and they were having to go for it on fourth down, they weren't getting it. This Chiefs defense last year, the year before, the year before that, and the year before that would have given all, all those up. All yeah. of them. This would have been a shootout. You're talking 49 51 ball game. And Spagnola has built that defense up and he has coached those boys up. But but the coach of the day goes to Eric Benamy. And and I think this is a man that just A has gotten the complete shaft this coaching hire series going on. And one of the biggest knocks on him was well he doesn't call plays. And I think Andy Reid made it a point. Now I haven't watched every second of every Chiefs game. So I don't know how often he calls plays or not. But he called plays today. Yeah, he had the play sheet, he had the headset, and he was running the plays in. And I'm going to tell you, my Browns are going to regret not taking him. Yeah, I think you're right. the The New York Football Giants are going to regret not taking him. Now, yeah. I, I don't know if the Cowboys are going to regret it. I I would I, I would rather have him over McCarthy, but that's fine. And and I think they're going to regret it. And then I I, abso- I I don't know about Carolina. The two, I'm guaranteed of. And the third one, I feel real good about. I So I was on with TJ uh, last week on the Three Dog Thursday podcast. Yep. And he asked me about that question, about being a me and does he deserve And I, I said, yes, of course he deserves a job. But uh, I, I said, let's – Let's look at this giant situation because that, that was the one that was big news last week and, and whatever. Yeah. But he was asking me specifically about the Giants job, and I said, do we even know that ben and me wanted that job? Like, I think that's a, a big thing that people maybe don't pay attention to. Um, Gettleman is still there. And it, he, it's it's like a, a lame GM walking. Um, I don't know of many people that would have taken – that Giants job. Now, I understand now you're, there's... You, you could be right, and I don't know the ins and outs of this. I don't know. I do think he interviewed for it, though. Yeah. But I, that doesn't mean anything. I'm going to tell you this. As a Browns fan, my list consisted of 
one slightly a of Josh McDaniels as I think Josh McDaniels is going to be an outstanding head coach his second turn around. I think he's going to be a spectacular coach his second time around. I think he was pretty good his first time around. He got, he had Tim Tebow as his quarterback and, and a whole lot you can do with that. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that was his decision though. I mean one one B is is Benemy, and I'd rather have Benemy because then I have a chance of Tommy coming back to the Patriots if Josh's still there. And uh, I think third would have been um uh oh my god, my brain just went dead. Defensive coordinator for the Eagles. That uh, uh Schultz. Shorts. Shorts, yeah. Shorts. I, I think I'd I'd rather had shorts over 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 um who the guy they freaking took. Stefanski. Stefanski, yeah. Which, which, how funny is that, that Stefanski gets the job uh, the day that his offense only puts up 147 yards? Yep. I mean, the just, only thing I can think of is maybe he was told he was getting the job and just didn't care about football anymore, which is insane. You want that Super Bowl in your resume. Yeah. I, I wouldn't think that that's what happened. I think I think his offense just got shut down. So, well, and, but it was also, like, like we said, just – Terrible game plan all all day. Like it was just weird. But he's he's the one that puts together the game plan. Yeah, no, you're right. the the reason I had a flaw with it was not the execution. It was the game plan. Yeah, it was it was just the play calling in general. In general, it was it was strange. Um, as far as but, passing yards go on this uh, this Chiefs Texans game, uh, three hundred forty eight passing yards for the Texans and only three sixteen for the Chiefs. Can so, we take out the first quarter? Uh, well, I can't on... I, I on don't the, have the ability to do that with what I'm looking up on my phone. No, not not right now, I can't. I would um, venture to say that if you took out the 240 yards that they got in the first quarter, then maybe they didn't have a lot in the no, first no, quarter. They, they that might be wrong because they scored off weird plays. So, no, they, yeah. if you those, go back... Those might be legit numbers. No, they're they're 100% legit because think about it. Okay. Like, they had a 68-yard drive at the end of the game that ended on downs. They had a 33-yard drive that ended on downs. Another 33-yard drive that ended on downs. A 75-yard touchdown drive. That's, uh, you're right. You're half. right. Okay. I so, was. I was. I thought I was trying to take a shot there, but their first, all their scores came after the first big drive on weird stuff. Yeah, it was. It was strange so, stuff. I mean, they're, so they're those first, didn't. Those, those didn't cause them yards. Their first drive of the game was six plays, 75 yards, and it was a masterpiece. Yeah. I mean, they came out of the gate ready to roll. When um, when I saw that, I just thought this is going to be an over game. Like, I, I just knew b- both teams are going to score tit for tat. And then when the Chiefs kept dropping the foot, I mean, the Chiefs look like they've never played football before. They look like they've never practiced. And this is, this I mean, they is had that four different week. guys have drops that hit them in the hands, and some of those guys were I'm, were wide open. Oh, yeah. This is like they had the bye week last week. I, you have to think a lot of that played into it, right? Did they rest their guys the week before too on week seventeen? No, they played the Chargers, um, but they it, I, they rested like maybe in the fourth quarter. Um, yeah, they 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 played. They that's played. fine. They, you can play. That's fine. You can play. So I don't think the bye week messes you up. I just think that happens. I th- I mean it's I could see it making teams a little rusty to start with, right? I don't know. I, I'm going to tell you this: every time a team takes week seventeen off and they've already got the bye week locked up. I'm going to bet against them at least in the first half line. Oh, yeah. Like, I will I will conventionally just bet against you in the first half because I just assume it's going to take you a half of football to to, to get lubed up. Yeah. Because your bones aren't worth aren't used to sitting on your ass for two weeks. Um, the MVP of this game, do, do we give it to Mahomes or should we give it to Travis Kelsey who had 10 receptions, 134 yards, and three touchdowns? It, it's a 1,000% Patrick. I think you're probably right. It's not even close. He was he was unreal. Uh, he was their leading rusher. Seven how, carries, 53 yards. How in the world I got even odds on two and a half touchdowns? Hey, you got me. It was even, even freaking odds. That's insane. On two and a half. That but This wasn't after they were down 24 to nothing, right? No, it was before the game started. That I made this prop Some, like or this morning. Somebody Somebody set the wrong line. I mean that should have been at least like three. You, you, so I got greedy. We're gonna we're gonna talk about the next game. This is a pretty good segue to get into the next game, but it's a little bit on this one, a little bit on that one. You can put it wherever the hell you want. But so you can actually move one of the props, the the number, and it changes the juice. All right. Right. And I didn't even think about it with Patrick's. And the only reason I didn't is because I saw even odds two and a half free money taken. Okay. Yeah. But I opened up 
the Seattle game, once I realized this Chiefs game's in the box, and I'm I'm covering all three bets, and I'm about to be super duper loaded. And so I drop down the uh, the Seattle game and say, Russell Wilson passing. Let's see how this goes. Two touchdowns was minus 138. And I thought, oh, that's bad odds. What's three touchdowns? So to make it two and a half to where three is a win, not a push. Okay. Was what I send you? Plus 335, 385? Yeah, yeah it was on a. I, I texted it to you. Three da, 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 351. Yeah. So I moved it a half point to where three wins it. And I and I went from minus 138 to plus 351. Now it didn't matter because yeah, because he only got the one and they just refused to throw the football. But uh I will I will tell you why. I wish I'd have bumped that Patrick one up. That's and that's what I'm trying to get to. I should have looked at it first. And I should have juiced that Patrick one. Here, here is why that line was two and a half. He had three, let's see, to start out the season, three touchdowns against Jacksonville, four against Oakland, three against Baltimore. Then he had zero passing touchdowns against the Lions. He had one against the Colts, three against the Texans, back when they, uh, when they got beat 31-24, uh, then he plays against Denver and gets hurt. He only had one. Mm-hmm. He comes back on November the 10th against the Titans. He throws four three. And then listen to this. November 18th against the Chargers, one. Against Oakland, one. Against the Patriots, one. Against Denver, two. Against Chicago, two. Against the Chargers, one. So he had not had three passing touchdowns in a game since November the 10th. I love it. Free money to me. Oh, yeah. Market incorrection, baby. Well, when, when he did not have an MVP season, I know that. But we're now in the playoffs, and he's the best quarterback playing football right now. Yeah. And guess what? That's not just because he's the only one left. He was the best quarterback playing football when the playoffs started. Yeah. Yeah, he absolutely he, was. He is still a better overall. He didn't have the season. He's still a better overall quarterback than Lamar Jackson. He is a much better quarterback than Drew Brees and Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers. He is still the best quarterback in football. I don't yeah. care about what his season was like. We're in a new season now. Yeah. No, I t- and I'm only giving you the stats because we're trying yeah. to figure out where the line came trying from. Trying to figure out why the hell they were so far off. Oh, I bet if I'd have just I'd have juiced it to three. Oh, it would I have been astronomical. It, because, I mean, I just moved it a half point, and they moved that other one plus – Almost 400 points. It was like yeah. plus 300 and some points. Yeah. Yeah. It's insane. Absolutely oh. insane. So the, oh, that'd have been so much together. Oh. <laughs> All right. Anyway, All right. Don't Let's, agree. Uh, Move on. We, we're 52 minutes in. Let's go ahead and talk about the, uh, <laughs> the Packers and the Seahawks. Um, Packers win 28 to 23. Uh, first things first, let's go ahead and talk about the, uh, the spot at the end of the game. Um, Jimmy Graham catches a pass. The the Packers need one more time or one more first down to uh, put the game away. You know the Seahawks are out of timeouts. Uh, if they get the stop, they get the ball back, or you know Green Bay has to go for it on fourth down, whatever. But the spot, I did not see any way that he got to that line. Uh, am I am I crazy for that? No, and, and, I don't think like, he got there. But I almost it doesn't matter. I mean, it, I, I like, had the Packers minus four and a half, so like, I obviously yeah. it was good for me. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you this: it was close enough to where whatever the call in the field wasn't changing. That's, and I could easily see watching that live. You giving him the spot because of the way he fell and the way he landed and the way he rolled. It, it just it's too hard when a guy's falling forward. The ball's technically behind him because the ball's here and his head's over here. And so you kind of think, and then he like rolls. And by the time he finishes rolling, he's like way the hell over here. Yeah. I I totally get why they said he got the first down live. Okay. I absolutely see that there's not enough to overturn it. And that's fine. Seattle got beat because Seattle has the worst play calling in all of the teams in the playoffs. I have been t- I've been talking about this since last year. Do you remember me talking about Schottenheimer? Yeah, Brian Shanahan. Schottenheimer. Yeah, wanted he wants to run the football 
so badly. And <laughs> and I, I don't know that it's him or if it's Pete Carroll, I, but you don't have running backs, man. Like, what? DK Metcalf is a grown ass man that cannot be stopped. He got two freaking passes. Yeah, he had two. And, and like Troy's even showing, like he's wide open. Russell sees him. Why isn't Russell throwing the ball? Like, I don't know what the hell's going on. It, it Why are we running the ball every time they get into the seven yard line? But when they got like first and goal from the eight, but yeah. they'd run it three times and they score two times. But it's just one of those things where. Now, yet you're you've lost like three minutes for you're down, and now you're losing like three four minutes of time running the football here when you want these quick easy throws. A, I'm greedy and I wanted these three touchdowns. But <laughs> the the other side of that is is just imagine what happens if you throw for those three touchdowns. Okay, you don't lose that extra minute and a half. That bad spot doesn't kill you. That yeah. bad spot doesn't end the game. The if you well, look at two minutes left, if you go back and, and look at the numbers, uh, this will give them even more reason to continue with the play calling that they, they, they are playing with right now. They had 24 rushing attempts, which doesn't seem like a lot, but God, it felt like a lot during the game. Uh, they had 60 plays, and they, obviously, they had to throw the football a lot when you get down 21 yeah, to three. You get down 21, um, but they they had 24 carries for 110 yards. That's 4.6 yards a carry. That's not bad in the NFL. Like that's that's pretty. It's better than uh, than what the the Packers did. They had 30 carries for 109. That's 3.6. So you, when you look back at the numbers, like it, you're gonna think, okay, well, if we had just made a play here or a play there, we win the ball game, which technically is true. True. But the the well, play calling put them at such a disadvantage in this ball game. Yes. It, yeah. It, no, well, what lost the game for them is third down. Aaron yeah. Rodgers on third down was hitting – and this is so weird to me. It was so frustrating. The, the stats I, on that, by the way, three out of nine for the Seahawks and nine out of 14 for the Packers. Yeah, that'll do it. Nine out of 14 right there, win you a ball game. You tell me a team got nine out of 14 uh, on third down, I'm just going to assume they won the game or at least covered whatever line there was. Yeah. This game was a close game. That team didn't get blown out. Um, t- Troy Aitman. Troy Aitman – has forgotten more about football than I will ever know in my entire life. Twice, twice on those big third downs, he says, oh, anytime you get uh, Devontae Adams lined up man-to-man, you got to go to him. And both times they did a replay, and both times as soon as the ball snapped, everybody on defense immediately backs into a zone. I I don't know a lot about reading coverages. I don't know what too high say. I don't know what any of that shit is, okay? I'm not great at it. Being a New England Patriots fan, I know when to predict. I, I can see a zone the second the snap is called. I can see a zone because Tom Brady picks it apart every stinking time. And teams finally, last year and this year, figured out you just can't run a zone defense against him. You have to play him man to man, even if you can't match up with the receivers. You have to. And I'm thinking. Why does he keep saying that it's one on one? And Devontae Ad- just say it's a zone, and and Adams is finding the hole in the zone, and Rodgers is hitting him wide open. Yeah, because every time it's a stinking zone. Normally, I'm, I'm not one of these guys that like I hate the booger memes and just making fun of bad announcers. Bad announcing sucks. Okay, John Gruden ruined my favorite night of the week for over a decade. All right, but now that he's gone, nobody's that bad. Okay. So I try is, not to is Booger complain. Not that bad? No, Booger's Booger's not as bad as John Gruden was. No, absolutely not. Okay. I, I look, I am still on the corner. I know he said draw play. I think he misspoke. He wasn't trying to say that. He I, I know I know what you're coming with. It's I'm awesome. standing on the Booger corner still. All right. That's all I, I do him, like Booger McFarland. I do. When yeah. he says when he tells stories, I find him very entertaining. Yeah. And I appreciate the fact that he has no qualms about criticizing people who do dumb things. All right. And Gruden lived in a constant world of blowing everyone. Everybody was the greatest player he's ever seen in his life, which means none of them are very good at all. Because if everybody is the best, then you're all average. Yeah. If everybody makes A's, then now A's are average and it doesn't matter and doesn't mean anything. So (laughs) on that, Troy was bad tonight. Yeah. Troy was real bad. And like these are things I'm trying to figure out. How the hell is Monte Adams wide open every freaking third down? 
Is anybody going to cover him at all? And they've got guys, and even at the second half, they talked about, well, we're going to put Shaq on him. And, and Shaq Griffin should be able to shut him down. Or, or, and he did. He did. Devontae Adams in the second half, numbers went way down. And when he had a big play, it was when they went back to the freaking zone. The the zone play, like, so I can understand why they would go play zone. I, I can understand. Really? Because it, here's, here's why. Um, you feel like you can get a rush on Rodgers, right? And, yes. and Rodgers, like, where we look at Joe Burrow in college, when you blitz him, his numbers go up. With Rodgers, when you blitz him, his numbers the past couple of seasons way have gone way down. Right so now. if you can get a pass rush on him, then you feel like you've got a shot here. But if you're going man-to-man, then you feel exactly what Aikman said. If it's a man-to-man and you've only got one guy on Adams, then you know that that's where Rodgers is going to go every time. Like that, but that's I, where he's going every time in the zone. And it's wide open. Right, you don't need that, three seconds they, to throw the football. They, they couldn't get to him, though. That's what I'm saying. They couldn't get to Rodgers. But you can't get to somebody when the guy's running the hot route. When he's running the short cross... Yeah, that's and I, it's third and three or third and nine. Guess what? That wide receiver can get nine yards quicker than an offensive or defensive lineman can get four yards. Yes, agreed, agreed. And, and so, therefore, he's going to hit it every time because it's wide open. Rogers was, uh, Dude, was go to press coverage. Listen, I don't know a lot about a lot. Okay, yeah, but I would press the shit out of that guy, and I would put the biggest, strongest cover corner on there, knowing that he's going to burn me. But before he burns me, I'm putting his ass on the ground. He's yeah. going to have to get back up and then burn me because yeah. I am checking him at the line which, of scrimmage. Which will give, he's not getting that hot route. Which will give your defensive line time to get to Rodgers. Yes, and, he's and not getting get, that hot route. Woe be on me to think I know more than Pete Carroll. And, or or, or Ken, Corn, uh, Ken Norton Jr. is the, uh, the defense yeah. coordinator. Yeah. But I, I, I'm just telling you, the zone just isn't working. And it wasn't the whole game. And yeah. as soon as the first quarter's over, you know it's not. And you don't change for three quarters. Well, they finally changed towards the end of the second or the third quarter. Yeah, uh, they went they went man to man. That's when Adams kind of got slowed down finally. But nobody else is beating you. The reason you run a zone is because you don't know who to double team. By the way, yeah, you no, run no, a zone because that's right. you don't know who to double team because they have so many weapons. Well, guess who doesn't have so many weapons? It's a good point. Uh, Rogers was sixteen out of twenty seven for 243 yards, two touchdowns. It felt like he had a lot more completions than that. Uh, as far as... No, it, he had the same amount of completions as Devontae Adams. Uh, had catches. Well, and Adam, that's the only guy that caught the ball. Adam, oh. said, Adam said eight. And and, yeah. and Jimmy Graham, Jimmy Graham getting up, doing the old peace sign. Yeah, the, the number two was for the only two big plays you made the entire year, by the way. And they were both in this game. You made two big catches. Congratulations, <laughs> Jimmy. You made a contribution to something. Here, here are the guys that, uh, that caught passes for Green Bay tonight. Uh, Adams had eight receptions for 160 yards and two touchdowns. Jimmy Graham had three receptions for 49 yards. Geronimo Allison, one catch for 11. Jamal Williams, one catch for nine. Uh, Marquez Valdez Scantling, one catch for eight yards. Aaron Jones, that one was for a four. Massive fantasy bust this year. Yeah. Uh, Jay Sternberger, one for two. And Jake Kumaro was targeted one time but did not catch the ball. Uh, so that, that evens to 16 receptions, 243 yards. Averaged 15.2 per completion. Uh, Russell on the other side. If you took Devontae uh, Adams' numbers out of there, the average completion would go way down. Jimmy Graham had one big one and one like eight eight or nine yarder for a big first down. Yeah, De- Devontae Adams, uh, he averaged 20 yards of reception. He carried he carried the entire offense. Yeah. I've never sure. seen a receiver shut it. I will tell you this. They go to San Francisco. I don't know what the line's going to be yet. They go to San Francisco. They will not play a zone, and that defense will put him on his ass. They're going to check him at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, I, I agree. They're big, and they're physical, and they're nasty. When uh, when it comes down to it, this was a fun game to watch. Uh, this oh, was no. evenly matched teams. Uh, it was it was beautiful. Just a, a beautiful I was disappointed game. in the weirdness that didn't happen. Is that is that wrong on my part? I guess, like, we've come to expect These Green Bay the Seattle games, A, Seattle plays weird games all the time. Yeah. And these Green Bay Seattle games have always had something in the middle of it that's been big controversial or just weird chaos or something. And it was a 
pretty clean game from start to finish, and no, no nothing turnovers. really strange or weird happened. Not not a ton of penalties. No, you know, block kick kind of things. Like I, I, mean, I do think I do think the face mask on uh, on Javion Clowney is a makeup call from last week. I, I do agree with that. Because that was not a face mask. That was a – he tackled the shit out of that guy, and he threw him down like a rag doll. And last week we didn't call that unsportsmanlike penalty that we should have, and so we're going to hit him here. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm with you there. I was looking to see if they've uh, if they've already released the lines. I didn't see lines as we were as you were talking. I was I was trying to look up what lines tomorrow were that are, are, are for next week. I'm sure they'll be out sometime tonight. I'll find them in the morning. I'm uh, I'm actually looking at sportsbook review right now. Anybody got anything uh, close? Let's see. We do not have a line for Green Bay San Francisco yet, uh, and I'm imagining they're trying to figure out injuries and whatever. I don't know who would be injured, but typically uh, San, line, uh, Green Bay had a couple of guys go out tonight. So that, that's, that's probably, probably what they're waiting on. Um, but the Titans in Kansas City, Kansas City opens a seven and a half point favorite. Uh, and the juice for the opener for Kansas City is plus 100. Kind of so if you want, if you want to lay all those points, we'll give you money. Well, it's yeah. even money. If it's plus 100, it's even. Yeah, even. Yep. So it's, uh, oh. it's interesting. I mean, right now, I'm not touching that. I'm I'm gonna have to sleep on that a couple of days. We don't have to make a pick till Tuesday, right? Right. We got a couple of days. We'll 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 wait to make that. We'll wait to make that. Ask, ask the Lord about that one. <laughs> I don't know if I like that or not. This uh, but yeah, let's let's close this Packers Seahawks game. Uh, Rogers played a beautiful football game. Uh, yeah. he wasn't he wasn't the best. He wasn't the Rogers of old, but he was close to it. He hit and, the open man when he had the open man. Yeah. He was and, he was he was dead on accurate when he needed to be accurate. He can't really get away and he can't run anymore. Um I, I thought it was funny. He broke out one time to take off running and I was like, <laughs> Oh man, he makes yeah. that guy miss. He's got nobody in front of him for ten yards and instead he didn't even try to make that guy miss. He slid at the line of scrimmage and might have lost half a yard. Half a yard. Yeah. And I, I was like I saw the flag. Dude, if, if he misses <laughs> that guy, he's got ten yards easy. Nope, yeah. not even taking that chance. Not even trying. <laughs> um, not not dumb by him, by the way. Probably smart move. I, I'm okay with that. He's, and, he's gotten uh, hit and so yeah, many times, I, he, like over the years. Uh, it, I, I can understand why he would go down in yeah, that spot. Just go down. He he's definitely accurate. He's he hasn't lost his accuracy. He hasn't. He hadn't really had to throw the fastball, so it's hard to tell if he lost the fastball or not because he just doesn't throw that pass anymore. I mean, he just doesn't thread the needle anymore. They they run a different kind of offense where guys just kind of find holes and get open, and he can find ways to drop balls in. Yeah, no, you're right about that. It, it's weird to think about because, you know, we haven't we haven't paid attention to Green Bay in a while. Um, you know, they're 13 and three this year. We kind of we all kind of thought it was a little bit fraudulent. Well, but, every uh, game we thought, well, they should have lost that one. Yeah. Oh, they yeah. should have lost that one. But if you, you I think back, the only team that's good that they kicked the shit out of. Was it the Cowboys? Uh, and the Cowboys ended up not being a good team. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Let's see. I'm looking at the schedule now. 10-3 to over Chicago, 21-16 over Minnesota, 27-16 over Denver. They lose to Philly. Uh, they beat Dallas by 10. They beat Detroit by 1. They beat That Dallas game, they beat the hell out of Dallas, though. I know it was a 10-point game. They they dominated every point of that game. Uh, they beat Oakland 42-24. to They beat It was Kansas a Saints City. game. Let's see the Saints get all right. So they they got destroyed by the try. They didn't they didn't play the Saints this year. Oh, okay, for some reason somebody said they had the tiebreaker over the Saints for home field advantage, but that, that didn't make that any had, sense. That had to do with uh, with uh, division, uh, like an uh, NFC record, and so. Oh, okay, NFC record. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, and so they yeah because they lost the Chargers and the Saints lost to didn't the lose NFC. any AFC games. They lost NFC games. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. they got killed by the Chargers. They got killed by the 49ers. I think so the only team the they season, really dominate. Like the, to end the season, so they beat Carolina by eight. They lost yep. by 29 at San Francisco. Uh, yep. They beat the Giants 31 to 13. But then the four games to end the year uh, 20 to 15 over the Redskins, 21 to 13 over the Bears, 23 to 10 over the Vikings, 23 to 20 in comeback fashion over the Lions. The 21 to 10 game against the Vikings was a pretty dominating win, too. Yeah, 20, 23 to ten on that Monday night. It was and they because they because they yeah. don't. I mean that the, the Vikings the scored. 
Yeah, the Vikings scored late to get it to ten. I mean that that was an that was an ass kicking from start to finish. They never had a chance to win that game, and it was on the road. Um, that's the only I think that's the only good team they beat the hell out of. Everybody else was a one score game. Yeah, everything was pretty much one score. Uh, they they beat the you know Giants by eighteen. Yeah, but that's um, a Giants a bad team. Uh, like, that's, we, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Beat it, the hell out of bad teams. I don't care because everybody's got those in their resume. But it, but even still, like they didn't even beat the hell out of bad teams typically. I mean, it was no that Lions game at the end of the year. They needed that win to get home field advantage yeah. and to get the bye week, and they almost got got. Yeah, I mean they they were down what seventeen to three at the half or something like that. Yeah, I mean they needed they needed a big time comeback. So Let's see, I'm I'm trying to pull up the stats on it. it they, was, they're an interesting team. They they are an, they are a real interesting team. I will tell you this: if they go into San Francisco and they win that game, I'm I will be impressed. Uh, I agree. I would love to see Aaron Rodgers and Patrick Mahomes. Uh, it, one because of the State Farm commercials, but two because it's it's the old guard against the new. You know. Well, the other part of that, not just the old guard against the new. Are we even thinking about coaching matchups here? Because you and I watched uh, what's his ass in in Tennessee last year and what, Vrabel. Yes, and no, not Vrabel. Um, the OC. Um, Arthur, the OC for Tennessee, the Giants. I mean, no, the Packer, the Packers head coach oh, was Matt, Matt Lafleur. Lafleur, yeah, I was Matt it. I wanted to call him Fowler, but I knew that wasn't right. Lafleur, <laughs> that that Lafleur against uh, against Vrabel would be interesting. That'd be very interesting. Well, Lafleur against Andy Reid would be a coaching mismatch of epic of, proportions. Of ep- yeah, um, like. Yeah. Do we think this guy's going to be good, or is this just a product of Aaron Rodgers carrying this team? No, this is not Aaron Rodgers. This is that Packers defense, okay. like a hundred percent. So, so we're not. So we're still. We're still not. We're not believing in Lafleur, right? I not yet. Would I need you to... buy stock in him right now that he is a fourteen and three coach with a playoff record, knowing the price you have to pay for stock of a fourteen and three coach with a playoff win? I I would buy stock in him if I knew that Mike Pettin was going to be his defensive coordinator for the. You know, nope, for the duration. Nope. See, but the problem is, is you're paying a you're paying a premium price for him. Do you think he's going to be better than this next year, or the year after that, or the year after that? Even with no. Mike Pettin, no. This is his ceiling, right? We believe that. Yeah, I think I think the I, schedule Packer set up fans perfect. everywhere are like <laughs> you mfers, well, it, but, and they they can if they want to. But look, it, the, the this is his six, ceiling, right? They went six in, uh, six nine and one last year. Like that that's what the Packers did, which gave them the easier schedule this year. Uh they didn't have to really beat anybody this Touché. year. Touche. They didn't. They so, really didn't. I mean, they, they went thirteen and three against nobodies. And we thought that winning I thought that win against Cowboys was a was a big boy win. And then we came to find out, oh no, the Cowboys are a shit team. Yeah. Uh, that's yeah, basically. Yeah. So we're 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 hundred percent certain. We don't know what the number is, but we're certain. We're certain the 49ers are going to the Super Bowl. We're certain of that, right? No, I'm not. Man, I got till Tuesday. Don't be trying to rush this on me. <laughs> Matt LaFlower, or whatever the hell his name is, is not going to be a Super Bowl quarterback. Not his first year as coach? A head coach. It, but look, I don't, I don't necessarily trust Jimmy Graham. And I, I haven't seen anything out of Kyle Shanahan to make me think that, like, he is that much better than an Aaron you Rodgers quarterback team. You don't, you don't, you don't remember, you don't remember that, you don't, you don't I, remember that, uh, that Falcons team that that he completely turned into the best offense in football for two years. Yeah, but he he's got Jimmy Garoppolo now, and it, oh, as opposed to Matt Ryan, who's lighting the world on fire without him. I I have more faith in Matt Ryan than I do Jimmy Garoppolo. And there's no chance of that. I call me nuts if you want to, man, but I I I don't. I don't know yet. I'm one like, guy struggled to win four games. Come on. Look, Jimmy Garoppolo and them like it, well. And had far Garoppolo superior weapons, year, by the way. But they, look, they went six and ten in Shanahan's first year. They went what four and twelve last year? Is that right? If you gave Jimmy, if you gave Kyle Shanahan all of Atlanta's offense of weapons, the whole offense line, everything, but he gets Julio, he gets Calvin, he gets he gets everybody that comes with it. But he has to have Jimmy Graham, Jimmy Garoppolo. Give, Gar- Garoppolo, yeah, whatever. And you and you give the Falcons all of what they've got. He he's he's got the same team he's got right now, and they're probably better than they've been. 
because there's no Julio Jones on that team. And Julio Jones is one of those receivers that chains lives. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. But, like, I did just see this Falcons team go into San Francisco and beat them in, like, week 15. That's fine. So, like, that's, a, that's, that's the, the NFL, though. I understand that, but that that's where I'm coming from. Like, I, yes, it was a dominant win for uh, for the 49ers over the Vikings. And, no, the Packers didn't look great, but I think the Seahawks are better than the Vikings, uh, especially on the road. I, would, I agree with that. I, we're not disagreeing on any of these things. I, I think the Packers have a chance here, um, but uh, we did see San Francisco absolutely beat them to death. I mean, beat them by yeah, more than four touchdowns. Uh, just a, you know, middle middle of the season, whatever it was. So, yeah, I mean, it, it, if you need an answer right now, yeah, I'd probably go 49ers, but I, I wouldn't say it's a guarantee right now. I just can't believe in – Matt Le, whatever his name is, LaFleur. is going to make the Super Bowl his first year as head coach. That's if, just not if, what happens. If he does, Mike Pettin deserves the biggest raise of any coordinator that, out there. That doesn't that doesn't happen in this sport. It no, just it, doesn't. It, it really doesn't. Uh, if if Rabel were to make it, it would be his uh, his second season. Yeah, second season. That's we're having a different conversation. Okay. Lots of things change in two years. Yeah, but your true. first year, your first time being a head coach. But at Shanahan, it would be his. Third season, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's his third year. And so, I mean, we'll we'll see. And like for for Lafleur, like it's not so much the coaching as it, he's got Aaron Rodgers. Like it, it and I understand that you got Aaron Rodgers, Devontae Adams, and Adam Jones. Aaron Jones, yeah. Aaron Jones, whatever. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. Everybody knows I'm really bad with names. It's, it's not a disrespect good. thing. I, now, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes it's absolutely a disrespect thing. Right now, it's absolutely not a disrespect thing. No, it's all, I think everybody understands. The only reason I'm correcting it is just so that we have it right on the podcast. Oh, yeah, so Perfect. people know what the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> I know it's going on in my brain. You know it's going on in my brain. I don't want anybody else in there. That's what I mean, happens. And they don't uh, want to be in there either. When, when we've been doing this for four years, I, I know exactly who you're talking about. <laughs> oh, he doesn't know anybody's name. Yeah, that That's, guy. Yeah, that guy. <laughs> all right, anything else that you can think of that we need to hit on? No, I think we're good. I think we're good. All right, go over to tunicatravel.com. Tunica, Mississippi is the South's premier sports gambling destination. They All their sports books are great. Their golf courses are great. Their uh, steakhouses are great. The concerts and comedians and whatnot that they have coming through, all great. They got some good stuff going on down there. Tunicatravel.com is the website. Go find out more about us over at winningcureseverything.com. Uh, you can find our podcasts, previews, picks, videos, social media platforms. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. You guys know the deal. Go check it out. Leave a nice review on the podcast. If you're on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Make sure and comment. Tell us what you thought about the games this week. Uh, if there's not anything else, we will see you all again in the next few days. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.